Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning to all of you. We welcome you to Holy Name of Jesus Parish. We pray that our Holy Mass might be able to reach and to bless all of you who gather with us this day. Let us then begin as we normally begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, I will offer him the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O God, I earnestly repent of all my sins, and I am truly sorry that I have offended you. Most loving Father, have mercy on me and forgive my sins. I resolve to amend my life to improve and sanctify it that I might become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. You, my sheep, you are the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, says the Lord God. Alleluia. Then we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. Through all generations we will declare your praise. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have, Christ, have Christ, have Christ, have Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. 
For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, shepherd of your people, strengthen us through your risen presence. May we walk with you each day and follow you in humble trust, for you are the good shepherd. You call us by name and lead us, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. On this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, we take the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, that all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone, rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gradual. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs. Alleluia. Carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. Alleluia. Alleluia. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. John. Beloved. See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him for we shall see him as he is. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory, for he is our God, and we are in the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. 
I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forever. I am the Good Shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. Words taken from the Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We find in the Gospel of John the great I Ams. Jesus says, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. I am the living water. I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Each of these great I am's of Jesus brings about not only the declaration of his own divinity as God's only begotten Son, but each declaration made by Jesus brings about the blessed assurance of spiritual enlightenment unfoldment, fulfillment, and guidance for all who seek his way, his truth, and his life. On this, the fourth Sunday of Easter, which we also know as Good Shepherd Sunday, we read of another great I am of Jesus. He declares in today's gospel, I am the Good Shepherd. You know, of all our physical senses, the ability to hear is one of the most important. There are so many beautiful sounds when we listen to music, such as the great composers of Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, and others. And we can also hear the stillness of nature. But you know, in our world today, there are so many other external sounds which we hear every day that are noise and distractions. And these distortions make us deaf to the quiet sounds of the Good Shepherd, the Master's voice who calls as a shepherd to a sheep, found in the quietness and in the depths of our very souls. 
We learn in catechetical instruction that each of us, born in the image and the likeness of God, possesses his breath of life and a spirit that we refer to as conscience, for conscience is his voice. In today's gospel, we read that the Lord calls out to his sheep by name, and he says, I know mine, and mine know me. And that they are willing to listen to his voice by following him. It can be said that we are all called each day by this inner voice, which exists deep within each and every single one of us, and are beckoned to follow his good news, the gospel. We are directed through his teachings to strive daily to align ourselves to that voice. My dear brothers and sisters, I believe that when we truly search through reading of Holy Scripture, especially the words of the Good Shepherd, and then meditate and reflect upon the wisdom we begin to align ourselves closer to that inner voice and begin to hear this inner voice a little clearer and a little stronger. In the end, this voice brings each of us closer to the shepherd and guardian of our souls, the Lord Jesus, as Peter preached in his first letter. You know, we also learn from catechal instruction that prayer is an essential tool that helps center ourselves to hear that voice, apart from all the distractions that we find in the outside world. I don't know how many of us truly understand the meaning of the term that the word, the logia, was made flesh. We learn in Jesus' day, and even today in Palestine, and other areas in the Middle East, that shepherds have an uncanny ability of making sounds that can not only lead the entire flock, but also individual sheep. The layout of the land in Palestine where sheep would graze is very rocky. It is easy for the sheep that as they gaze, they become lost in the rocks and the outcroppings but when the shepherd calls out, the sheep hear his voice through a series of whistles, singing, or what some would describe as baby talk. The sheep know the uniqueness of the shepherd's voice, and they will not hearken to be led by a stranger's voice. It can also be said that sheep are not the smartest of animals, just as humans. Humans, like sheep, tend to wander and place themselves in dangerous situations. And just like sheep, they can be taken, stolen away by others, robbers or thieves, who would take them away from the shepherd. In this season of Easter, we know that the resurrected Christ, as being the Good Shepherd, calls out to those who have become lost through their own choices. He calls out to them, gently beckoning them by name. But sad that, um, that like sheep, many humans, humans will not always come back to the safety of the flock or care to listen to the voice. And in the end, so many will be devoured in the world as many are devoured among the problems that humans face. Because of our free will, we are all given that choice 
to either listen or to ignore that inner voice that calls each of us to be a part of the flock and to be led by the Good Shepherd. And so my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord calls out to each of us today to offer security and safety of being a part of his flock. He is there during days of tribulation. He is there as an overseer and at night as a protector. We only need to listen to his voice within to find guidance, direction, and inspiration. We read, and I know that there are many who have experienced already in their lives that when the Lord calls, He calls us by name, and many have listened and have heard Him calling us by name. The question is asked, do we really know Him? Do we tend to graze away from the guidance and the safety of the shepherd? And do we truly believe and trust that He knows our daily needs? And so may we hearken in this Easter season to the voice of the resurrected Lord today and in the days to come where we will find assurance as written by the words of St. Peter who wrote in his first letter to Rome. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. I will appoint over you shepherds after my own heart, who will shepherd you wisely and prudently. Alleluia.
brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept this oblation and grant a loving, wise, and courageous spirit to all who pastor, minister, and teach in your name. Through all their words and deeds, may they seek your glory and increase within your kingdom. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son. Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, especially at this time when he became our Paschal sacrifice, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death, he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, we he join with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, in our prayers today. Let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us offer prayers for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus and pray for their families as well. Let us keep in our prayers the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and all the health care workers who on a daily basis strive to save others. In our deepest prayers, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, all abused and neglected animals, and all those who suffer violence both here and abroad. Let us pray for all those who serve in our armed forces, that God would protect them through his holy angels and have them come back to their families safe and sound. And let us pray today for all here present and their loved ones whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin, Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. 
May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Christ your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant table the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. For these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, our man, by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, 
All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you, do not look at our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and thus seek to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and holy longing. Through this communion, make all of us, your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will, and may it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray, most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. 
I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. May your ordinance help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, because your commands I do not forget. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you so shepherd your people that they shall not want. Lead us peacefully to your green pastures and refresh us beside your still waters. For us who have shared in the holy banquet, restore our souls when we go astray, and always lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lo, the sacrifice has been offered. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. 
the Word, became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, again I wish to thank you for coming and sharing with us this day. It is my hope and prayer that the good Lord would bless you and your loved ones. We will conclude our service today with the offering of prayer, keeping in mind all those intentions that we may have for our loved ones. We will also offer a prayer for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones. May God be with you and bless you and your loved ones. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.